Thank you very much. Well, this issue strikes me as um, a case when everybody agrees in principle, but when it comes to practical agreements and practical steps, then uh, every country is speaking about its own problems and about its own tasks. Um, this is probably one of the areas where theoretically there is a 100% consensus and practically there is almost no consensus at all. Uh, I would like now to give the floor to Mr. William Ramsey, who had an experience of working at the IEA as Deputy Executive Director and now works at the IFRI as Director des Programmes d'Energie. Thank you. I feel a bit like the, the cleanup batter in this particular lineup. Uh, and the, the commentator just uh, raised the issue of practicality versus the theory, the, the, the rhetoric versus the reality. And I think it's a pretty good time to take a look at that. Given that we're coming into the negotiations in Copenhagen, we're supposed to be getting down to some brass tacks. We're supposed to be dealing with the real issues. Uh, but if you take a look at how we've been doing up until now, you can see a lot of uh, interesting political rhetoric. You can hear a lot of talk about this target, that target. You hear the 20, 20, 20, and 20. You hear the uh, biofuels target in the United States. You hear Hu Jintao say we're going to reduce energy uh, intensity 20% in four years. Uh, there are targets all over the place. And, and how are we really doing in meeting these targets? Well, you heard a little bit from Rick when he was talking about that. Uh, I think we have to. I think we have to get past this sort of competitive targetry to where if a politician is going to set a target, let him set a 2015 target, but then let's put a 2012 target in there so we can test him inside of his political time frame, see whether he's uh, really living up to his, to his commitments. Uh, we've heard a great deal of talk from politicians about how lower energy intensity is working nicely, economies are being uh, de-intensified, they're using a lot less energy per $2,000 of GDP and all the rest. But if you take a look at real carbon emissions around the world, carbon emissions are just not dropping. You heard they were growing in the aggregate, but there are only about eight countries in the IEA whose uh, carbon emissions have actually dropped uh, in the last 15, 17 years. And those basically are the countries of Eastern Europe or Germany who absorbed the five lender where their carbon emissions have dropped. But nobody is really effectively cutting carbon out of their mix. We've talked in the IEA and in the, uh, in the G8 about efficiency measures, and you heard that efficiency can save you 50% already. It's the cheapest, it's the safest, it's the cleanest. There's nothing better than efficiency, and yet it doesn't happen. We have some 25 initiatives announced by the IEA that were to be adopted, implemented, put in place. And if you look around the uh, IEA countries and other countries outside who took up these recommendations, it's not happening. We see a lot of talk, we don't see a lot of action. Power plants, you heard Rick say that a power plant is for a 15-year stretch. Typically, if you put in a nuclear power plant, in the United States at least, it's likely to go to 80 years. If you put in a coal plant, it's going to go 60, 70 years. Coal plants being put in now are going to go well into uh, the, uh, the century before they're going to be turned over and you can put in the new technology. And if you look back over the last 30 years of improving technology in coal combustion, we have only moved from, say, 30% to 33% in terms of our efficiency, whereas the state of the art is much higher. These things, once they're built, don't turn over. The best coal uh, capacity in the world is being built in China. They're building more up to supercritical coal capacity than anybody else in the world. If you look at R&D spending, and it's, just not a, it's not just a, a, a theme that uh, keeps recurring, it's the reality of We're going to have thin, uh, thin film solar? Are we going to have concentrators? Are we going to have second generation biomass? Can we talk about switchgrass seriously? Or are we going to keep trying to use sugar and corn and other things for our bio? Because we have to move on. What about the CCSS, cap carbon capture and storage, CCS? We're talking about uh, taking some, maybe 20% of our carbon out of our mixes with CCS and yet the investments that are necessary for that are not being made. And we talk about having a turning point in our emissions from the economies at 2020, but we don't think CCS is even going to be deployed until 2020. What is plan B? We need to start talking concretely about what is plan B. Renewables on the lips of every politician, favorite topic. But how much are renewables really going to contribute? At an absolute max, you can get 50% renewables and electricity by 2050, more probably by 2030, you can get 5, 10% max. That 
you can't spend all of your time talking about renewables. You've got to get people focused on the conventionals. You've got to deal with oil, gas, coal, nuclear. It's boring, but these are the ones we're going to be using. Look at the forecasts. Those are the fuels that we're going to be using for the next several decades. We've got to get them right. Now, some of the issues our, our negotiators are going to tackle in Copenhagen are pretty tough, and you've heard, uh, you've heard them touched on already up here. Uh, one is characterized as carbon equity. You heard about the distribution of uh, carbon, uh, carbon emissions per capita around the world. It goes as high as 44 tons per uh, individual in Qatar, gas producer, to as low as 100 kilograms in Ethiopia or Haiti. How do you bridge that gap? What is the equity that you hope to achieve by the time of 2050? Do you mean that everybody's going to be emitting a ton and a half of carbon dioxide from energy in 2050? I don't think so. We have offset mechanisms in all of our targets. EU offset mechanisms permitted for their, for their targets, 50 to 80 percent. What is an offset? It means you go somewhere else and find cheaper carbon, you buy the rights for the emission, and you bring it back home and you put your factory in place. Well, how much can you really do that? And if you're doing that, then basically you're already skewing the distribution of the carbon out at the end of the, uh, of the period, either through carbon trading, through offsets, uh, through other mechanisms that are designed to give greater permission to people in industrialized countries who are investing in carbon intensive activities. How is it supposed to come out? And you'll hear the Chinese saying, uh, those involved in the in negotiations, you're not going to come to China and mine all of your savings in our backyard. You make the savings in your own energy systems. Don't expect us to provide all your emissions. 